What's up, Wolfpack? It's your co-host, Maya, back with your main host, Austin. And we're here to uh, give you episode three, which is where we're going to be highlighting some of the RSO students on campus are most thankful for. Yeah, and before we do that, we wanted to make sure to do a little bit of coverage of something going on on campus here this year. Um, Northwood's going to be taking part in a competition against Saginaw State uh, Saginaw Valley State University to collect goods for veterans, uh, particularly personal hygiene products. Um, it's part of the Great Lakes Bay's Veterans Coalition Fill the Trailer Project. See, goods collected between now and November 30th are going to be used to help veterans from mid-Michigan all the way to the Mackinac Bridge. Each item collected from their respective schools counts as one point. And this is kind of going to be a way for us to show Saginaw Valley State University that can't really compete with the Wolfpack when it comes to supporting the community, um, especially coming off the back of Go Mad Day. Like Maya was saying, we wanted to draw attention to what some students, some things some students are thankful for here on campus. We're going to be showing a little bit of footage of the Go Mad Day initiative and how students were able to give back to the community through that. And then we're going to hear from two representatives or two different groups here on campus, one being Standing in the Gap and the other one being our SEAT team. And they're going to tell us about what they're thankful for within those organizations and how it's really helped them become better within themselves, both personally and professionally. So without any further ado, let's get into this episode and let's start talking about how we love giving back to the community, Wolfpack. We're back in studio with our first guest, and we knew we wanted to do an episode to highlight how we're thankful here on campus. One of the things that a lot of students are thankful for are their involvement in student-run organizations. So when we started thinking about which ones should we really highlight for this episode, uh, the SEAT team came to mind. And when we reached out to their director, it became pretty clear that Alex Carlson was going to be an excellent guest to have on to really highlight what this team has been doing this year. Um, so we're just super excited to have him on. Let's make sure we give him a great welcome and really ask, how are you doing, Alex? I'm doing amazing. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're, we're excited to have you on as someone that's a pretty young representative of this program. It's good for our listeners to get that early um you know, the early access to what it really looks like uh, being involved in that organization. Hi, Alex. Uh, so can you give our viewers a little insight about what the SEAT team is? Sure thing, Maya. So the SEAT team is effectively just a group of students that are able to volunteer their time at signature events. North University has four signature events a year. There's the President's Freedom Celebration. Um, there's the Auto Show Gala, which happens during the Auto Show weekend. Um, there's the Distinguished Women's Gala, which happens um, usually towards the end of October, that just, just happened. Um, and then there's um, Outstanding Business Leaders, which happens in early April. Um, and the Signature Events team, their job is just to come in during those events and provide Northwood with, you know, volunteers, so that way Northwood doesn't have to go outside to source those, you know, because we need 20, 30 kids to put on these events. That'd be really expensive for Northwood to outsource that work. So, you know, at the events, seat team will help with the registration, help out, you know, setting everything up, make sure everything's running smoothly at the events. Um, and also give SEAT team a great a chance to network with the different people. Um, moving forward, we are kind of hoping to add though to the SEAT team and add on um, because right now SEAT team is very focused on just those signature events. Mm -hmm. So we would like to expand that. Um, we've just started the gem cart training program to teach the students how to you know, drive the gem carts around. Um, and we're reaching out to other um, organizations on campus to see how else we can help out. We have a large team of volunteers. So however we can help out at other events would be amazing. Yeah, that's that's awesome to hear um, and a great idea by Northwood. You know, like you said, it'd be very expensive for them to outsource a lot of that. And why is that even necessary when our students are learning how to do that stuff anyway? So I love that they're really giving you all the opportunity to do that. Um, so now that we know a little bit about the SEAT team and what it does on campus, how how are you involved in the team this year? So my job on the SEAT team is I'm actually the SEAT team's um, lead or coordinator okay. um, for the director of signature events, Jen Carpenter. Um, I work for her and my job is to just make sure that the seat team is where they need to be and that they know what they're supposed to do. Among other things, you know, before events, I'm helping, you know, print out things and design posters, stuff like that. Um, my job with the seat team is primarily just making sure that they all have a task. They all know what they're doing. They have all the resources that they need. So that way Jen doesn't have to worry about organizing 30 kids and planning an event. They're organizing the kids is my job. That's awesome. Yeah. It sounds like it gives you a, great, a lot of great experience in that role. Um, and, and I know we were talking a little bit before the show. Can you just tell the, the you know the, our listeners what year you are and how quickly you've gotten involved in all this? Yeah. So this is my first year at Northwood. I'm a freshman here. I uh, it was just it's very cool actually. Jen, you know, reached out to me. 
she said she wanted to have an assistant for this position. I accepted that and I have it, it's been really fast paced, um, but I've absolutely loved it. I've had an amazing experience and I've learned more than I could have ever imagined. I learned just a few months here. So it's been yeah. really incredible. As Austin already said, we know you're getting a lot out of this. Is there anything that you're specifically the most thankful for uh, from this organization? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of different areas that I'm super thankful for. The number one is just the experience I've had. This, you know, it's an experience that you can't really get anywhere else. Right. Um, planning these events, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that goes into them that I didn't even realize that went into these. From you know, just finding the venue to finding the times to planning the speeches, and there's so many moving parts that all have to come together just at the right moment to make these things work. Yeah. And that that's truly a lesson that I, you know, have definitely internalized. But also just the people I'm working with on a daily or semi-daily basis, just from the seat team members to the staff at Northwood University, they're all absolutely incredible. Um, similar to the staff is leadership. Um, you know, obviously being a freshman, they've put a pretty large amount of trust in me to yeah. make sure that these, you know, these events are one of our Northwood University's kind of four-facing events. When donors and sponsors are looking at these, this is what they see as the signature events. Mm -hmm. um, and so they put a lot of trust in me helping make sure those go smoothly. And I just thank them for giving me that opportunity. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I know you mentioned earlier some of the events that you all put on and the the um, Outstanding Women's Gala being one of them. Uh, can I know that just happened recently. Can you give us a little bit of a recap as to how that event went? So the event went remarkably well. The students obviously did an amazing job. I've gotten over 20 different emails from different donors and sponsors saying that they love the students. That's why it's so important to have the seat team. You know, we mentioned earlier how the seat team is really good for Northwood being a much cheaper option than having to pay to have 30 or 40 people come in and mm -hmm. um, volunteer. Well, you know, they're not volunteering at that point, being staff at these events. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also really good because the sponsors and the donors, they want to see the students. That's why they that's why I support Northwood is for our students. Yeah, absolutely. So having the seat team is kind of a dual purpose for Northwood, having the uh, free labor, but also being able to display our students and dis display really good students. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, it sounds like you're doing an amazing job, Alex. I wish you nothing but the best of the luck going forward and the events you're going to continue to put on on behalf of Northwood University. Um, you're making us proud every single event that we put on and we hear all the great things and we see all the great posts. So continue to do your thing. And I'm sure that you're going to have a great next three years here, uh, continuing to be a part of the Timberwolf family. Thank you very much. Absolutely. back in studio with our second guest of this episode again staying on that same theme of you know drawing attention to rso's that students on camp are thankful for um so when we thought about another one that would really work standing in the gap came to mind and it was something that 
know, it has a really tight knit community here on campus that we wanted to highlight. So we reached out to the people we knew in the organization and they recommended Luke Gorlick to come on and kind of give us some insight into what this organization does and how students should be uh, excited to go into it. So let's get into it. Uh, Luke, how are you doing today? I am good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Excited to have you in to cover such a great organization. I'm excited to be here to cover this great organization. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, can you tell us what Standing in the Gap is? I don't know too much about it, so I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. So the whole purpose of Standing in the Gap is to build and make disciples of Jesus Christ. So it's an organization that was formed in Northwood a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. It was it was before my time. Oh, Jesus, is making me feel old. <laughs> in 2020, and um, but it, it was long before that. We had a um, a chapter at Ferris, and we had a chapter at um, SVSU. Actually, we still do. So we got two of mm -hmm. them now. Um, and our main thing is to build, like you said, a tight knit community where Christ followers can just get to know each other and escape the hubbub of yeah. campus life once a week. And this happens then. It happens on our retreats, which we actually just came back from. We had one in Camp Brethren Heights and we're out down in Rodney. Oh, nice. And we do um, a lot of other stuff throughout the semester, such as activities and um, we do ultimate frisbee on monday night so we have a ton of activities for everybody yeah. and every interest and we have small groups that meet a couple times a week we have a men's group we have a women's group we have a um a lot of other type of situations that yeah. we do and part of our um wednesday night lesson we have a sermon we have worship and we congregate and we usually go to late night afterwards so we get to have fellowship with each other then too so it's always yeah. a lot of fun that's awesome. I'm really glad to hear that something like that exists on campus. You know, when you're on a college campus, especially one that's really small, like Northwoods campus, you know, it can kind of, it can be easy to, you know, lose that side of your life and how you were brought up. So I'm glad that there's uh, something on campus that's really drawing attention towards it. Um, but kind of staying in that same realm, I want to know, Luke, you know, what drew you towards the organization? How did you find out about it and what kind of pushed you to say, I want to be a part of this? When I was a freshman, we had for my foundations class, we had to mm -hmm. go to the RSO walk where we had to walk. That's back when they have it on the mall walk. Yeah. So we had to do that. And the first organization I saw, one of the tables was standing in the gap. And I'm like, what is this? And I'm like, yeah. they told me about it. And I was thinking how cool it was. And I've just stuck with it ever since. That's back when we met at the amphitheater. Yeah, so we okay. would meet I remember that. I remember that, yeah. It was it was so cool. We met at the amphitheater on Wednesday, and it was great because we had to see people walk by and wonder, what are these people doing? Yeah. And it was, that's how you, probably you know about standing the amphitheater. Yeah, absolutely. Amphitheater. Yeah, during that time, I was living right there in Nagley Village. So anytime I'd, you know, walk over towards the calf or be walking uh, to my night classes, I would see you guys out there or kind of hear, I remember... Uh, if I remember correctly, Cole Briggs was involved in the organization. He'd be out there playing his guitar <laughs> from time to time. So, you know, you always had uh, some type of attention being drawn towards it. That's awesome. I hold Cole Briggs near and dear to my heart. He was my roommate for a, a year and a half. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we got to hang out and do Standing in the Gap stuff together. So it was that's like, so that, cool. it was so much fun. Nice. So uh, do you guys usually meet in that chapel that's in like minor? We meet in the student union. Oh, okay. Nice. So then do you guys have like specific roles within your organization? Do you have like a position within the organization or is it kind of just a congregation that comes together? We have a leadership team. So it's it's led by our pastor, Gabe. Oh, okay. And it was, um, we have probably like seven or eight people on the leadership team and they're promoted every year. He chooses people that he thinks would be good for leadership team. Yeah. And that's actually one of the things that I'm on. I'm leading the foundations group this semester. That's awesome. Yeah. So we learn all about like the basis of the Christian faith, standing in the gap, and just anything religious in general. So today we're talking about resurrection of the dead. We got to talk all about baptism and baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And we mm -hmm. go really deep and we get to meet a live oak in um, downtown Midland. That's so that, so cool. It's always a lot of fun. Nice, nice. Um, is there anything that you are specifically very um, thankful for in this organization? I'm just thankful for the level of community as a whole. Like I've come from a, um, a high school. I didn't have a lot of friends in high school. It was always mm -hmm. really rough. So I'm thinking like, what am I going to do with college where I'm coming here where yeah. I have 2000 people and I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
Yeah. So it's like when I met Stanny in the Gap, these are some of the greatest people I've ever met. So it's like they have helped me so much. And it's always somebody I can talk to, always somebody mm -hmm. I can call up and hang out with. And it's like it's such a blessing for somebody that um, didn't have a ton of social skills in high school to be with a group that is able to accommodate that and just like understand. And it's like it's just such a great organization to be a part of from anybody from any walk of life. And I'm that's one of the things I'm so thankful with the organization. That That's awesome. I, I hope that a lot of our, you know, people that see these episodes and are going to be coming in in future years kind of see that, you know, there are communities at Northwood that you don't have to feel like you have to be that prototypical, super outgoing person to be able to be a part of that. You can kind of find a home here at Northwood and in whatever kind of realm that is. Um, but I know that with it being, you know, Thanksgiving season and go mad day being here on campus recently. Um, I didn't know we spoke a little bit before the show and you mentioned how, you know, you have members that are in different organizations and they volunteer on go mad day on behalf of those. But I know you said you guys did some volunteering recently. Can you just tell us a little bit about what that was, how you all volunteered as a group? We did. Sandy and the Gap went to Open Door Midland to replace doorknobs and, nice. and help out with that. I actually have a friend that works there. So it's like she was so thankful for the organization and how Standing in the Gap came to help out with that because it's like it's so great to be able to do community activities. Yeah. And it's like, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. I was really sad. Yeah. But it's like that's one of the things that Standing in the Gap does. We, they put in the group me, hey, I we need some people to go to Open Door Midland to help replace doorknobs. And immediately people were like, we're going to go. Yeah. You, know, you want to go. So it's like it's incredible that there's always people willing to help yeah. in the organization. Yeah, it's especially being able to help such a great organization like Open Door. Uh, that, so to be able to hear that you guys were you know, participating and being a part of that is great. Definitely pushing the Lord's message. So it's great to see all and really putting into action what you preach. It's, it's a great thing to see. Um, so thank you for coming on the show, giving us a little bit into insight about this. I'm sure that a lot of our listeners maybe didn't know this was a thing and have been exposed to it now. So pay attention to y'all's email and start maybe seeing some more people at your meetings. And I'm sure they'll be welcome with open arms. Thank you so much. Yeah, you will be welcome with open arms. We meet on Wednesday night at eight o'clock and feel free to come and join us. We'll always be happy to have you and we look forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on, Luke. Thank you so much.